The Oregon Trail, a staple of 80s classrooms in the original edutainment title. It was originally developed in 1971 by a student teacher to be played using a teletype printer. It was later ported to the Apple II, where it ended up being played in every classroom across the U.S. But how does the game hold up today? I'm reviewing the MS-DOS version of the game from 1990. Strap yourself into your wagon, hitch up your oxen, and follow me along the trail. You start the game by choosing your difficulty, which is determined solely by how much money you start with. Then you get to name your party. Friends, enemies, TV characters, the sky's the limit. I went towards TV characters this time. Then you can choose when you leave. Usually the earlier the better. Next, there's the big pre-trail spending. You've got the oxen that move the wagon. Without them, you're not going anywhere. Then there's food, even though you don't actually need to buy that much, as you can hunt for it later. Next is clothing, which can be used for trading and keeps your family warm. Bullets. Essential, but you don't need many if you're a good shot. Finally, spare parts for the wagon, which you will need when your wagon breaks. You can talk to people to get hints and other background information at the various locations in the game. The game has a map that shows you how far you have to go until reaching Oregon. Traveling. This is where you'll spend much of the game. Every day, the game decides how it's going to screw your journey over. When you arrive at a location, you'll see some art of the location and hear a PC speaker tune of some old song. Not only do you see river crossings, but also forts, rocks, passes, springs, mountains. and the Dallas. Every time you cross a river, you have to decide how. The safest way, if you have the time and money, is to hire a ferry. You can ford across the river if it's shallow. Floating across is also an option. Then there's hunting. The controls for hunting are terrible, with the enter key as a walking toggle and the numpad framing. You need three arms to make it work properly. 
The minigame itself is simple, with animals randomly running around, bouncing off randomly placed scenery obstacles. There's a limit to how much food you can carry, and so shooting a buffalo will give you more than enough food to bring back to the wagon. The animals and scenery change through the game, including bears, pine trees, and cacti. Once you reach the Dallas, you can either pay to take the toll road, or float down the Columbia River. This gives you another mini game to play where you try to avoid hitting rocks until you can land your raft on the other side of the river. It is not fun. The problem is that when you hit a key to go left or right, it keeps going until you hit the opposite key. It will make you curse if you're not paying attention. After all that, you'll make it to Oregon. Your points will be tallied. And you might make it to the top 10. Try to beat Stephen Meek. Spoiler, I have. You'll get double the points for going as a carpenter. and triple the points for going as a farmer. During your travels, you'll encounter blizzards, broken arms, thieves, typhoid, fires, Broken wagon parts. And if you don't have a part, you have to sit around until you can trade for one. There's also impassable trails. Injured oxen. Dead oxen. Bad water. Cholera. Fevers. Measles. The infamous dysentery. And sometimes your family starts to die off. Drowning is quite common. especially on the Columbia River.
Once you've lost everybody but the party leader, they become fair game. You can even write an epitaph, but try to keep it classier than mine, okay? Even though the epitaph said this was a crap game, it isn't. It's really simple, way too RNG based, and it'll drive you crazy if you play it for too long, but it has earned its designation as a classic. Is it worth playing? Yes, if only for the trip down memory lane it provides. See you next time.